All right, so we are still in section 7.5, talking about different operations that can be performed on radicals. Right now, we're going to spend our time with this video focusing on how to add and or subtract radical expressions. Okay, so the major idea of adding and subtracting radical expressions is very similar to the idea that we had when we add and subtract any other algebraic expressions throughout the course of our career in math. The key is, and it's a three-word phrase we talk about all the time, combining like terms. Well, it's a slightly different catchphrase for radicals, but it's almost exactly the same. We're going to combine like radicals. Okay, and what that means is it's two or more radicals that have the same index. And remember, that's the little number that's inside the radical symbol, almost like the checkmark part of the radical sign. And the same radicand, so it has the same thing inside the radical. So here's some examples of like radicals. Square root of 3b and 4 times the square root of 3b. The outside number is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is that the inside number is the same, and we're talking about square roots here. Another example of a pair of like radicals, negative root 2 and 3 root 2. Again, the, the key thing is these are both square roots. The radicands are both 2. That's what allows us to combine these in a problem. Now, here's some non-examples, and we'll explain why. So I've got the square root of 3b and the cube root of 3b. Notice that even though they have the same thing inside the radical sign, 1 has an index of 2, the square root of 3b, and 1 has an index of 3, which is the cube root of 3b. Okay, So, they're not like radicals. Square root of 2b and the square root of 3b is another example. That went a little too fast. Let me go back and get you a chance to look at that. These are also not like radicals because even though there's a b in there, one is multiplied by 2, the other is multiplied by 3, so they are not like radicals. All right, so let's do some examples of adding and subtracting. So the first example, square root of 2 plus 3 root 2 minus 5 root 2. So we'll start with a very basic example. These are all like radicals because they all have a radicand of 2. So the way we would combine these is we're just going to combine the outside numbers. Now first off, remember, there's no number in front of the root 2, so that's like an imaginary 1. So think of this almost like if we were to do 1x plus 3x minus 5x. You wouldn't do anything to the x's, you would just look at the numbers. So we combine the numbers and we get negative root 2 because 1 plus 3 minus 5 is negative 1, so our final answer is just negative 1 root 2. We do not, I repeat, do not add the 2's. So we're never, ever going to add the radicands. It is only the coefficients in front of the radicands that we are focusing on in these problems. All right, let's look at another example. So we've got 5 root 3 plus 7 root 2 minus 4 root 3 minus 2 root 2. Now notice, not all of these radicals are going to be combined because not all the radicands are the same, but some are. So we'll focus with the ones that are the same. So we've got two root threes, or I should say two terms with radicands of three. They're circled there in red. And then we have two terms that have root twos. And I just box those in red. So this is kind of analogous to saying 5x plus 7y minus 4x minus 2y. It's almost the same problem, but the x's and y's are now radicals. So our final answer would be root 3, because 5 minus 4 is 1, minus, excuse me, plus 5 root 2, because 7 minus 2 is positive 5. Okay? You have a couple examples like this where there's some basic radicals to combine. Sometimes you'll combine them all, sometimes you won't combine them all. Give those a try, and when you're ready to look at some other examples, you can pick up where you left off on the video. All right, so let's try some more challenging examples. So we've got 3 root 45 minus 5 root 80 plus 4 root 20. 
Now, at first glance, you would say, well, there's nothing I can do with these. There's a 45, an 80, and a 20. But before we think about adding and subtracting like radicals, we have to look and see if we can simplify these radicals any further by taking out some perfect squares before we look at like radicals. So let's get some factor trees going and let's see if we can break down 45, 80, and 20. So we'll start with 45. That's 5 and 9. 9 is 3 and 3. So we look here, we've got a pair of the same factor. We have a pair of 3's, so we'll take those out and we'll write 1, 3 outside the radical. It'll meet up with the other 3 that's there and we get 9 root 5. Okay, so let's see if maybe we can turn root 80 and root 20 into something that's just a 5. So we'll look at 80. 8 times 10, 8 is 2 times 4, 10 is 2 times 5, and then the 4 we can break down to be 2 times 2. Alright, so we're doing square roots, so we'll look for pairs. we got a pair of 2's, another pair of 2's. So outside the radical, we write each pair once, so it's 2 times 2 that goes with the 5. So we get negative 20 now, because 5 times 2 times 2 is 20. Root 5, because there's that 5 from the factor tree that we haven't touched yet. Alright, now let's do 20. 20 is 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. I've got a pair of 2's. That meets up with the 4 when we pull out the 2, and we get plus 8 root 5. Now look, these are all like radicals. They were just in disguise with some bigger numbers. So, we combine 9, negative 20, and positive 8 to get negative 3. So our final answer is negative 3 root 5. Let's try one more. Okay, 9 root 12 plus 5 root 32 minus the square root of 72. Again, these don't look like like radicals, but chances are if we try to break down 12, 32, and 72, because I'm already visualizing in my head, since these numbers are kind of big, I know there's some perfect squares that we can take out of each of them. So let's do that first. Square root of 12 is 4 times 3, and then we have that 2 times 2. So we'll take out a 2, multiply it with the 9 that's already out in front, and we get 18 root 3. Alright, 32, same idea. Factor tree, 2 times 16. The 16 can then be split up into 2 times 8. 8 can be split up into 2 times 4, and then 4 can split up into 2 times 2. So we've got 1, 2 pairs of 2's. Each of those pairs gets written once and gets multiplied with the 5, so now we have 20 root 2. Alright, let's break down 72. 2 times 36, 36 is 2 times 18, 18 is 2 times 9, and then 9 is 3 times 3. So I have a pair of 3's, a pair of 2's, they each get written outside, and we would get a minus 6 root 2. Alright, so we still don't have all like radicals, because there's that root 3 in the first term, but we have some like radicals. So let's combine the two like radicals, 20 root 2 and negative 6 root 2, to get us a final answer of 18 root 3 plus 14 root 2. Okay, so that's basically all there is to adding and subtracting radical expressions. You break down each radical as far as you can, once they're all broken down, you just add the outside numbers of like radicands. With that, there's some practice problems. Give those a try. We'll look at more of these in class tomorrow. We're also going to try to put all four operations together and look at what are called binomial radical expressions in class tomorrow. And then we'll be finished up with 7-5. So with that, I wish you a good evening. If there's any questions, be sure to bring them to class tomorrow, and we will move from here. Thank you.